Well, uh, we're alone, Kay. What did you want to talk to me about? Oh, I've held it inside for so long, it's kind of hard just to blurt it out. <laughs> Take all the time you need. It's like, have you ever seen a movie where the girl likes the guy, but he doesn't know how she feels? Yeah. Okay, good. Then, you know how hard it is for the girl to tell the guy that she loves him. And even when she knows that they'd be perfect for each other and have a wonderful marriage and a happy life together. You know, nice kids. Only, the guy never quite gets how she feels, even though she's done everything she can to clue him in. Because he just sees her as a friend or you know, maybe there's another hey, girl. Or... I know what you're talking about. You do? And, uh, I feel the exact same way. Miguel, this is so awesome. Oh no, did I go too far? Or maybe I didn't go far enough. Okay. I know why you kissed me. I, I know how you feel, and I, I think it's great. Terrible things are gonna happen tonight, Tabitha. But there's n n no need to kill me. There's no need to kill Timmy either. Of course there is. You're worthless, useless. The time has come for you to die. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Please, give me another chance. I've been having a run of bad luck lately, but I can turn things around. Do you mean to have the dig at you, the pendant, didn't they? Yes. And thank you for being so stupid. You only get in the way. You're always screwing things up. It's time to be rid of me. Oh, this is it, princess. It was a moment last. Close your eyes, Timmy. Oh. Goodbye, princess! I'll see the vein! <laughs> Don't worry, father. Ethan and Gwen's wedding is less than 12 hours away. Nothing can stop it now. You better be right, Julian. The merger of our two families is crucial to the future of Crane Industries. If anything happens to cancel this wedding, the consequences will be dire. Rebecca, don't be ridiculous. Ethan is not calling off the wedding. Yes, he is. Because of Teresa. Oh, are you still on that paranoid kick? I am not being paranoid. Ethan is going to call off the wedding. That is the most preposterous thing I have ever heard you say. Ivy, it's true. He is going to hurt Gwen. He's going to ruin our plans and all because he has fallen for your housekeeper's gold-digging little daughter. I don't believe a word of this. Well, I wish to God it wasn't true. But no, tonight, Ethan is going to tell my poor Gwen that the wedding is off. I hate to do this to you, Gwen, but I can't let it go on any longer. These are the papers on Ethan that Mom was keeping for Mrs. Crane. She said she was making a memory book for Ethan and Gwen's wedding. So why didn't she? I don't care. None of it matters now. <sighs> Ethan's birth certificate. Just 
Chief Bennett. What does he have to do with Ethan? Chief Bennett when he was younger? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I mean, Ethan is Julian Crane's son. Oh my God! Julian Crane isn't Ethan's father. Chief Bennett is. Ethan is Sam. And it's son. You know how I feel and you think it's awesome? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the things I like best about you, Kay. You're not afraid to let your feelings show. I mean, even in elementary school, you'd always tell it like it is. We've been together for a long time, haven't we? Yeah. And all those years playing sports together, hanging out, spending time together. We're so close. Like we're one person. Wait, 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 wait. You've forgotten something. You've forgotten the spirits of the goody-goodies. You don't want them to win, do you? No. We don't want them to win. You were supposed to take care of that for us now, weren't you? But you screwed it up once again. You and your little step friend here are useless. We've wasted enough time on you. All right. All right, suit yourself. You don't think you need us? That's your business. You want to get rid of us? Go right ahead. But don't forget the box. Box? Box? What's wrong? You do still love me, don't you? Yes, yes, I love you. That's just Excuse it. Me, Ethan. I Gwen, um, what is it, Chief Bennett? I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, when Grace and I got home, she realized that she had lost one of her pearl earrings, and I just wanted to ask that yes, if yes, you find if we it, find if you... it, we'll call you. Well, you know, we're not going to keep it. Did I say anything about anybody keeping it? Chief Bennett will make sure the servants clean up very carefully, and I'm sure we'll find your wife's earring. Thank you, Gwen. Time's up. Come on, Gwen. We're going to start a Come on. Now, Gwen, don't be a party pooper. <laughs> You have a distinct talent for messing things up, don't you, Chief Bennett? Stuff it, Crane. Rebecca, I can't believe that my son would behave this way. It simply isn't Ethan. Why would I lie? I'm not saying you're lying, but you have had this misconception about Teresa from the beginning. Misconceptions? My butt! Look, I know what I am talking about here. And if you don't stop him, Ethan is going to call off the wedding. Look, we have to make him realize that, that a fling with the hired help is one thing, but walking out on your bride-to-be the night before the wedding is quite another. I, I'm sorry, I just, I cannot conceive of, of Ethan doing this. Ivy, you're not gonna let Ethan hurt Gwen, are you? Please. Please tell me you're not. If what you say is true, I will never allow it. Never. Ethan is Sam Bennett's son. Oh, I'm 
wonder who knows. Mrs. Crane, of course. Well, I'm sure Ethan doesn't know. His mama. His chief minute. Well, I'm sure he's never seen this letter before. No, no, he, no, he probably doesn't know. Crane. <laughs> Wouldn't they be surprised? The high and mighty cranes who think Ethan's too good for the likes of me. Lopez Fitzgerald. Oh no, no, he belongs with the Hodgkisses. Only the Silver Spoon. Country club set for Ethan. I should hate you, Ethan. <laughs> For leading me on and making me think that you were gonna call off the wedding, but I don't. The only people I hate are the cranes. And Louise is right. They just use people. Mrs. Crane used her son Ethan for her own purposes. She never told him that he wasn't a crane, or that his real father was a cop just like my brother Louise. If only he hadn't been brought up in that house. If I had met him as Ethan Bennett, there wouldn't be any obstacles to our love. There would be no Gwen Hotchkiss in his life. If only I had known the truth about Ethan. Is your problem, Ethan? All I did was tell her fiance that my wife lost her earring. Why are you getting in my face? I have more important things on my mind than your wife's earrings. Oh, well, it may not be important to you, but it is to me. What do you want me to do? Line up everyone so you can frisk them? Look, I didn't accuse anybody. Look, just forget. Okay, just forget. You know, I just hope that future wife of yours knows what she's letting herself in for. And Teresa, this is, this is unbelievable. If you don't believe me, look at Pilar. She knows exactly what's going on. Oh my God, it's true. What's the matter, darling? Your hairdresser leave you for another man? <laughs> You tell him, Rebecca. I have to talk to Pilar. Tell me what? Oh, never mind. I've given up trying to understand my wife. Great party back, wonderful prelude to the wedding. I was just on the phone to Father. He's on his way to Harmony as we speak. So pleased with the way things are going. Hmm. Well, then he's going to be ecstatic when he finds out there might not be a wedding. What? You can't be serious. Oh, I'm serious, Julian. Serious is a heart attack. We've always been like one person, Kay. If Charity hadn't come along, who knows? You know, I mean, things might have gone in a different direction for us. What? Well, you know, my mom always used to say that the girl you pick to love should be your best friend. You are my best friend, Kay. You still are. Wait, are, are you saying that if it weren't for charity that you and I might have gotten together? Yeah. I mean, but it's not just charity. I mean, you know, Reese came along too. Reese? Uh, you know, I, I found the girl of my dreams, and you found the guy of yours. I mean, how perfect is that? No. Miguel, you don't understand. What, what do you mean, about you and Reese? Yes. I mean, maybe if I didn't know you so well, I might not understand. 
I mean, but I know that's why you got excited before. I, that's why you kissed me. You know, you're just so full of love for Reese that you didn't know how else to express it. Miguel, my kissing you has nothing to do with Reese. You, you don't have to be shy with me, Kay. I mean, you know, Reese told me that you crawled into a sleeping bag with him. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not trying to lecture you. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that you have someone you feel so strongly about. You know, I, I just want you to know that that you don't have to have sex with a guy to make him fall in love with you. Sex? With Reese? I, I wouldn't, I never... It's, it's, it's okay. I know you haven't. I just... I just want you to know that you don't have to. I mean, no two people could love each other more than me and Charity. You know, but we know that, that making love will be more meaningful if we wait. I mean, Luis always said that, that the first time I make love to a girl, I should make sure that she's special. The one I, I, I really, truly love. And that's charity. And, and we're gonna wait. So, uh, I, I would hope that you and Reese will wait too. I'm glad you told me about your feelings for Reese. Isn't love great when you find it? I, I, I should get back to the campsite. See if charity needs me. Go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll come along in a minute. If it weren't for Charity, then it would be Miguel and me. Only he knew how much I love him. Go ahead, go ahead. Kill us if you must. But remember the box. Where, Where is, is the, the box? box? I don't know. But it's somewhere here, in the ruins of the old Harmony Settlement. Tell her. What's inside the box? Shh, not now, Timmy. That box must not be found. If it's found, it's going to be the end of all evil and harmony. Tell her. Tell Timmy what's in the box, or he'll die. It's like the box in the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. It represents everything that's good. Evil Charity's afraid of it. So am I. That's why I didn't want these kids coming up here and snooping around in the ruins. The box was lost about 300 years ago. And the forces of darkness don't want it found, because if it is found, what's inside it could destroy evil. We must get rid of Miguel. He's the good charity's protector. So if we just get rid of Miguel, we can finally get rid of the good charity. Come to the dark side, charity. No. I won't no. let you hurt Miguel. Don't give in to evil charity. Trust in your heart. Trust in love. You have no say in this matter, little Miss Goody God. What's happening? Good charity is trying to regain control of her body. Come to us. Come to us. You won't us. win. Evil will never win. Come to Get us. out of my Come body and go away. Tim Tim. Don't give him to evil charity. Trust in your heart. You will win. We're gonna get rid of you and the witch. Uh, charity, uh, y y you'd be wise not to kill us. I mean, you need our help to get rid of Miguel and to isolate good charity. Good charity is too weak. She never win. Your masters are calling. Come with us. Forget those weaklings. Don't count on it. Think of the power. I'm more powerful than you because I'm the essence of goodness. I will be in control. Rats. Charity loses this fight. You're done for to me. Love surrounds you. Remember faith. Pilar, tell me it's not true. Tell me Rebecca has lost her mind. Tell me Ethan is not calling off the wedding because of Teresa. 
It's not completely Teresa's fault. They both fell in love. I tried to stop them. I told them they were making a terrible mistake. I knew how your family would feel, but there was nothing I could do. They were headstrong, both of them. It was Ethan's decision to cancel the wedding. Ethan will not cancel that wedding. It will go on as scheduled. He may not be a crane by blood, but he is going to walk down that aisle as a crane, and as a crane, he is going to have the best that this world has to offer. He will not break his mother's heart, and as God is my witness, he will stand by that altar tomorrow with Gwen and say, I do. You're out of your mind. Not yet. But I'm on my way. Then Ethan's lost his mind. He can't call off the wedding. It's father. Yes. Julian, you idiot! You assured me there'd be no trouble. You guaranteed there'd be no problem with Pilar's daughter. That the wedding would go off without a hitch. I warned you, Julian. Alistair? Yes, this is Rebecca. I just want you to know that this entire fiasco is Julian's fault. What? Yes, he encouraged Ethan to sleep with the little tramp. Well, not that I mind, but for God's sake, they could have waited until after the wedding. A woman after my own heart. Rebecca, where is Teresa now? Well, I hope on her way out of the country. You see, I arranged to have a ticket waiting for her, as well as a substantial amount of cash, of course. Good, good, very good. I like your style. Our families think alike. A merger is definitely in all our best interests. Oh, I agree. Of course, that uh, merger will never take place unless we do something right away. Ethan is about to tell Gwen that the wedding is off. Put Julian back on the phone. I'm as stunned as you are, Father. I want you to put your head together with Rebecca. Think of a way to put pressure on Ethan. Make sure the wedding happens. Do you understand? Make it happen, or you'll lose more than just the Crane Empire. Oh, Ethan, that was so much fun. You should have joined us. Uh, Gwen, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I have to talk to you. It's extremely important. I know, sweetheart, and I have an idea. Now, I know that we made a pact that we wouldn't sleep together the night before the wedding, but how's this? You sneak into my room later, and we can talk all night, and then you can climb down the trellis in the morning, like Romeo. No, Gwen, it can't wait until later. I have to tell you now. I need these papers to prove that Ethan is Sam Bennett's son. Mrs. Crane could have me arrested. I know. I should thank Mrs. Crane for giving me this computer. Now I have the papers into the computer and I will have the proof. Why would Mrs. Crane keep it a secret that Ethan is Sam Bennett's son? When I've heard her say nothing is more important than love, she must have loved. Chief Bennett at one time to have Ethan. Why would she give up that love? And why is she trying to force Ethan and me to give up our love? Well, I'm not going to take this line down. There may still be time to stop that wedding. And one way to do it is to tell the world that Ethan is not a crane. I'm going to tell everyone that Ethan is Sam Bennett's son. You'll never kill Miguel, because I'll always be there to stop you. Just in faith, love surrounds you. Gone, little girl. Leave us. Go back to your puny god and admit defeat. Come to the dark side, Charity. Now, 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 Charity. I'm stronger than you think, and I'm not going anywhere. It's winning, Tabitha. Touch and go, Tip-Tip. Don't help get rid of Miguel. 
good charity could win and then we'll be toast. Do you mean to think we'll be toast? I have an idea. Charity, Charity, I have a plan that will help you get rid of Miguel. Why should he believe you? All your plans have failed. But, but, but trust me, it will work. It's brilliant in its simplicity. Now, well, if it doesn't, you're going down with us. Charity? Quick, Miguel's coming. Now listen, you go to the mine shaft, and I'll make sure that Miguel meets you there. I'm sure you can find a way to see that he loses his footing. No! Leave Miguel alone! <sighs> quickly! He's coming! Quickly! Go! Go! We'll be waiting in the mine shaft. Tabitha, Charity's not in her sleeping bag. Have you seen her? Oh, yes, yes. She was just asking for you. She went that way. I never should have left her alone. I mean, it's dark. She could get hurt. I gotta go find her. Charity! Come on, Timmy. Let's get our stuff together. Go over to the campsite. Well, Miguel reunites with his lady love. <laughs> Mrs. Crane, I have never wanted any of my children to be involved with your family. Good. Then we can all work together to bring Ethan to his senses. The only thing that might ruin the plan is if Ethan were somehow to find out he's not really a crane. Are you sure those papers are safe? Yes, I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure. Julian was already able to sneak into your house, steal my briefcase. Well, I want you to go home and get those papers. If anyone were to see them, there would be no wedding and no future for Ethan. I'll show the proof to Chief Bennett. And then I'll, I'll show it to Ethan. I know he won't believe me at first, and I'm, I'm sure Mrs. Crane will deny it. I mean, no one will believe it, but I will show them the proof. And then Ethan will realize that he doesn't have to marry Gwen. Well, Gwen won't want to marry him anyway if he's not a Crane. And then Ethan will come back to me. Pilar, please, you have to hurry home and, and get the papers. My only goal in my life has been to see Ethan happily married to Gwen and the Crane Empire firmly in his grasp. I know, and I want you to have that. If, if anyone sees those papers and Ethan doesn't marry Gwen, then my whole life will have been a waste. Oh. Mrs. Crane? I'm so, I feel to see. What, what are you trying to tell me? Look, Gwen, I care about you so much. And this is hard for me to say. Gwen, darling, uh, we must steal Ethan away for a moment. Mother, no. Ethan's he's trying to tell me something. I'm sorry, Gwen, but it's absolutely imperative that I speak with my son privately. Not now, Father. I know what you want to talk to me about, but it'll have to wait till later. It's about your grandfather. Grandfather? Well, what is it? it, it... Is he all right? Is he ill? Oh, God, I hope not, Ethan. You have to find out what's going on. Look, I'll be right back, okay? I, I really hope Alistair's all right. Are you out of your mind? You can't call off this wedding. It'll break your mother's heart. And what about Gwen? I mean, you have known her all your life. You're the only man she's ever been with. Are you just going to discard her like some used goods? I thought you wanted to talk to me about grandfather. Yes. You want to kill him? He'll have a stroke if you don't walk down that aisle with Gwen tomorrow. And what about my poor Gwen? Oh, she could just be destroyed. This would just shatter her. Oh my, oh my goodness, she could kill herself. Rebecca, Gwen would never do that. Oh, oh no, and then her death would be on your head. Oh, my darling poor girl. The light of my life. <laughs> Miguel, I'm... 
here. I'm lost. Please help me. Charity, I can hear you. Stay where you are. Charity? Charity, where are you? This is her scarf. She must have been here. Charity! Charity! Where's this wind coming from? Charity! Charity, answer me! Would you like me to get you a sedative? Yeah, that, that's a good idea, Polara. I think she's all stressed out with all the wedding preparations. Ivy, are you sure you're okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to get going. Back to your wife and your family? That's right. You're my life. Just like Julian and your children are your life now. <laughs> good night. Sam, before you go, could you do me a favor, a, a huge favor? Ivy, come on, that depends on what it is. Could you stop being so antagonistic with Ethan? Look, I never started a fight with Ethan. He's arrogant and angry. You know, I used to think he was different, but he's not. He's a typical crane. If he had a different last name, would he be a different person? Would you like him better then? <sighs> well, that's something we're never going to find out, because he is a crane, and he'll always be one. Look, Ivy, uh, in spite of our differences, I, uh, I do wish you a happy day tomorrow. How about giving the groom's mother a kiss for good luck? Just a peck on the cheek, Sam, for old time's sake. Good night, Ivy. Good night, Paul. I should have taken you in hand long ago. If I had, you'd recognize this for what it is. Infatuation with some cute little chicky who's wiggled her ass to get your attention. That is not how it happened. And I won't let you talk about Teresa that way. Hello again, Father. Has Ethan agreed to go through with the wedding? We're working on it, Father. Damn it! Let me talk to him. He'd like a word with you. Hello, Grandfather. Ethan, I don't know what's going on in that head of yours, but I want to remind you that you are a crane. You have obligations to the family, to your father and mother and me. You're Alistair Crane's grandson, and that stands for something. Or have you decided you don't want to be a crane? Of course I want to be a crane. I am a crane. It's my life, my identity. Good. And do the right thing, so I won't have to disown you. It's no use. Miguel will never see me as a woman. She's right, Jimmy. Miguel will never see her as a woman. In fact, if evil charity does her job, Miguel will never see anyone ever again. <laughs> charity! Where'd you go? It's dangerous out here. Come on! Let me take you back to camp. Well, you did it. You snagged Ethan, and he's wonderful. <laughs> Can you imagine having a man fly all the way to Bermuda with your maid of honor just to make sure the honeymoon suite would be perfect? <laughs> <laughs> to the luckiest girl in the world. Here, here. Cheers. 
grandfather, surely you're not serious. I'm quite serious, Ethan. Are you willing to give it all up? Your name, the power of the Crane Empire, the whole kitten caboodle for Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald? I don't appreciate being threatened, grandfather. I'm simply giving you the facts, my boy. Before you make a decision of this magnitude, you should know what you stand to lose. You think I haven't thought about the consequences? I've agonized over this for weeks. And be smart, son. Don't jeopardize your entire future. I understand what you're saying, Grandfather. But I have to do what's in my heart. If anyone can get through to him, it's his mother. He loves her more than anyone. You are my son, you are my life. You are my only reason for living. I would do anything for you. All I ask is that you do one thing for me. Forget Teresa and marry Gwen. Thank you, Mrs. Crane, for giving Mama this letter. And thank you, Mama, for bringing this letter home so I can find it. I knew fate meant for me to be with Ethan, and fate has come to my rescue with this letter. Once Ethan knows that Sam Bennett is his father, Mrs. Bennett, hi. It's Teresa. I'm sorry to call so late. May I speak to Chief Bennett, please? He's not. No. No, no message. Thank you. I'll just try back later. In fact, I think I'll go change and, and go wait for him right now. Hi, Teresa. Stop by to see Luis. Uh, is he home? Chief Bennett. 